Hello, everybody. Welcome to Telly Talks, where we talk about life, growth, relationships, and all things in between. I have a very special guest today. He is an artist and social media mogul, Spectacular Smith. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming on. Yes. So I know most people know you from Pretty Ricky mm -hmm. and social media now that you've like taken over the platform. Tell us more about your journey and how you got to where you are today. Man, the journey. Yeah, it all started from one of my guys hit me up telling me I could make money off of Twitter. Mm -hmm. At the time, I didn't really have any followers or anything like that and decided to really double down on that and get around people that was making money off of it. And as I started to make the money, I realized like, wow, this is like, this is like real money. So you just right? randomly got hit up on Twitter. Yeah. And, to... and my guy's name is CEO Matty J. Like, and he, he's someone that right, even right now, he like understands trends and how to jump on it. But at that time he was getting a referral. That's why it's important in business to put a referral Absolutely. system together because they would do all the talking for you. So that's what Absolutely. he did and gave him a cent of an iPad. And he was, he went crazy for that iPad right. and he put me up on game. And it just took off from there. I got around people that was doing it. The company was called My Likes. They had like the top 100 publishers who was making money. So what and were they, they had doing a to make money? So it's called Traffic Acquisition. So I will post links on Twitter. Mm -hmm. And when I post links on Twitter, the people that click on it, the advertisement that was on the actual landing page, once they get over there, I would make money off of that. So it's like getting paid off of the advertisement for exactly. everyone that watched that particular link. Exactly. So if you click over, I got you. So how, jackpot. how much did you make in revenue when oh, doing man. that? And how long did it take you to make that amount? So at the time, I just got kicked out my dad's house. Mm -hmm. and, and what time was this? Like This like, around, this was in my late 20s. Okay. I got kicked and out you're my 34 dad. now. No, not how 34. Old, how old are you? Um, 36. 36, okay. Yeah. Okay, this says 34, just so I'm 34. Yeah, that's when <laughs> For Forbes written my bio, so. Oh, okay, I was like, yeah, hold on now. an older bio. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so you're 36. Mm -hmm. When's your birthday? September 7th. September 7th. Okay, mm -hmm. so you like, what is that, Virgo? Virgo. Okay, love it. All yeah. right. Yeah, so at that time, I got kicked out. This is like pretty Ricky. We was doing our thing in Pretty Ricky and my dad was handling all the money when flat broke, kicked me out. So at the time I needed to figure out a way to make money. So when I got hit up on how to make the money, I was like, well, let's do it. You know, mm -hmm. I got time and I just started getting in these circles. That's why proximity is power. I started getting in these circles and seeing what they was doing. Right. And it just helped me take what I had to the next level because I was like, OK, it's some money being made. I went from like broke to like within six months, I was making a hundred K, you wow. know? So I made a hundred thousand. And then from that point, I started getting other pages. I said, listen, man, hey, it's a leaderboard. Within the following six months, I was at number one, like oh, wow. stuck at number one out of hundreds of thousands of publishers. So I just went to everybody else and I said, hey man, listen, of course, you would never be number one because that's my position, but you can be a better <laughs> number two. So let's do a I partnership. <laughs> right, right. And let me help you because I knew how to grow the followers and I know right. how to make the money. So the more followers you had, the more money you made. So, so it's as simple as clicking a link and watching simple. the advertisement. Simple. So what happens if they don't watch the advertisement fully? Do you get paid or no? Nah, you get paid off the click. Oh, okay. you get paid off the click. So. That's why people say clickbait. Like you, you uh -huh. try to get people to click on it and you, you make the money. Uh -huh. But what happened was fast forward. I did a partnership with all the top 10. Mm -hmm. I did 50, 50 partnerships with them. I made them more money than they were ever made by themselves. I laughed to the bank. I right. created a company to say, hey, not only I can do this for myself, but I can do this for you. So I decided to just go do it. A bunch of celebrities. I say, well, I love it. I started buying a bunch of digital real estates. I said, man, people already have pages. Right. So I, I became number one. People still don't know this. I started buying other pages. Mm -hmm. So you had a page, I buy it from you. You had a page, I buy it from you. Parody accounts, everything. And I started automating all the tweets. So I was running like 24 pages all at one time. Oh, wow. Killing the I, game. I know that was a lot of work. 
Because I'm it like, it wasn't I, no work for me. No. Nope. It wasn't no. So work. how are how are you running all the pages and managing everything? Like you're getting because other I did it all do- at one time and I automated oh, it, and then okay. I figure out a way to scrape tweets. So I used to go to the most viral pages that had generic stuff on it, and then I would take funny pages, take the generic stuff, and then I would clean it up, and then I would upload it into some called social oomph at the time, and then I'll make it go every single hour. Oh, wow. They couldn't so compete like, with me. It was like, it was just going, going, going. It was all automated. Work. Yeah. Everything. So 24 it, pages. So all I had to do was schedule out the posts to go oh, and monetize. So every, like, what were you doing? Every hour, every couple hours? Like- every, I would say, I would do it like, yeah, every couple of hours, every two, three hours. Wow. Like, just imagine you post something yeah. online and you refresh the dashboard in my lights, where right. the advertisers are. When you refresh, you made $100. You refresh again, you make four dollars. You refresh again, like in seconds. That's crazy. As soon as you they, post, and, and you don't know what it is that you're clicking. It's just like, does yeah, it, you does do it have a, a description of like, hey, this is a, no, it's a link. You know, a you video. Make, it. People started trying to get too creative and just mm-hmm. trying to get people to click. Like, oh, Justin Bieber naked, like you know, trying to get right, people to click on right, it. Right, right. But that's not a long game. So everything I think of, I think five years ahead. Right. Always, so I think strategically. Ahead. So I knew that wasn't going to be a long game. I knew if if I did that, people would stop clicking on it. So it was short-term gain, but long-term failure. So I decided not to do that. So I decided to be truthful on what they was clicking, but try to be creative on how to get them to click it. So that way, more people want to click on it and be more interesting to them. So um, for an aspiring person that's in a situation where they're in the hole or something, would you you tell them this is something that you should do to make easy quick money or is it something that takes more of like a strategic teaching of like how to go about it you know how to like you know um i guess create um create the the links where they're constantly clicking all the time well this is a strategy from years and years ago right and every every wave in the internet space you got to catch it. And as soon as it's about to come down, you jump off it and catch another wave. Right. That way you keep going up and up and up. Right. So this one is burnt out. Like that's patched up, burnt right. out. Even Facebook realized what we was doing and they seen people were interacting and it was like, damn, people are loving it. So they were favorite in the algorithm more right. and then did a survey and realized people hated it. They got clickbait. They got tricked. Like they got upset. Right. And they just suppressed me in the algorithms. Um, but yeah, it, it was it was uh, so it was a fun time. It's very strategic on, into the things that that you're clicking, how long it takes to click, what you're clicking, Psychology. what you're telling that. Yeah, yes. very. So how was that for you? Like, how was that transition of being a musician to uh, doing something that's completely different than your norm? Well, you know, I've always been in the business world, but people don't know that, like, even from when I was a kid selling candy in middle school, 10 people working for me selling candy in high school, selling candy and put out of business from vending machines. Mm-hmm. Like I always been an entrepreneur, but it was never cool back then to like promote that. Mm-hmm. When you was a businessman, it was a boring back then. Right. And then as time progressed, we like realized that, okay, people start promoting entrepreneurship and it became right. a cool thing. Right. So, when I had the opportunity was when I first got on Forbes. Then that was the moment where I started promoting myself as like the business guy, but right. nobody took me serious. So for me to make a, so like people think it's a transition, but really I was doing this since I was a kid. Right. I just started promoting it and exposing that I was actually doing both, but right. it, it was always parallel with entertainment and business from being in a dance group, selling candy and right. being a rapper to, you know, having people work for me. But once once things kind of went left and I had no choice but to just focus 100 percent on business. Right. Then that's when I start promoting it more. So what do you think was your like aha moment of, all right, this is what it is. This is what's what's making, you know, the wheels turn mm. type of situation. What was that moment for you? Man. In terms of business, I really never had an aha moment. But in terms of my purpose, that was my aha moment when God sent me a messenger telling me what my purpose was. Absolutely. And he told me what his mission was for me. 
And I just had to follow in his, you know, in his steps. He had to guide for me. And from that point forward, I just been carrying out his mission. And that's what made me launch my school, Spectacular Academy. I and, love that. Uh, and I just been impacting people and and just doing things that I feel like um, is what God want me to do and getting people to serve in their purpose and, and their mission that they supposed to carry out on what God put in in today into their heart into Absolutely. their mind into their vision, and that's what I just been that's what I've been doing this whole time, you know, Absolutely. and created a com- yeah created a community called Spectacular Stars. Spectacular Stars. Okay, let's talk about Spectacular mm-hmm. Academy, the okay. school that you created. What, why, and how did you create yeah. that platform? So when I got my messenger, and he told me my vision, like literally everything he said came true. Like he told me literally this year, this year, this, like he literally mapped it out. So it made me a believer like, okay, but right. I was never disagreeing with it. But right. the You're moment spectacle. showed, yeah, 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 the moment showed that like be even more committed to this because it's right. real. So from that point forward, I realized that I had a skill set. The angel told me whatever you like, you think whatever you have right now, but it's nothing compared to what God got coming for you. Right. Nothing. And this the time I was pretty Ricky on the hotline, like made millions of like grind on me, you grind on me on the way. Everything, right? Right. And he told me that ain't nothing. I was damn, that ain't nothing. Like, like it's what's more, coming, right? It's more. Right, right. But I never focused on that. So from that point forward, I said, okay, so God got a journey for me. I'm going to let him guide my feet and I'm going to be obedient. I'm going to do what he say. So as I'm going through the motions of business, I'm learning things. So that's what made me think, okay, if I'm going to impact and I'm going to use my voice to impact and God is taking me through this journey, I have to take what I learned and give it to the people. Right. So everything I learned, I put it in curriculums. Anything I disagree with in society, in the world, and education that's broken, I change. I don't believe in somebody telling me how to get somewhere they never been. Absolutely. I don't believe in that. I think that's BS. It doesn't make sense. It don't make sense. Yeah. Right? I agree. So if I want to create impact and I want to help people have generational freedom, then they need knowledge for that. Absolutely. In order for them to get the knowledge, they need to learn it from the right person. Agree. With the right accountability. Anything is possible. So I decided to remove professors in my school and add millionaire mentors. As me, as the mentor to mentors, I take the people that not only I mentor, but my colleagues and put them all in one school and have them teach the people. I love that. And there's mentors of all different walks of Absolutely. So if you're really great at marketing Facebook ads, I'm going to have you teach Facebook ads, even though I know I right. dominated Facebook ads. But if you right. spent a half a billion dollars on Facebook ads, why I'm teaching Facebook ads? I'm going to let you teach Facebook right. ads. Right. If you if I have great leadership skills, but you lead 10,000 people, I'm going to let you go ahead right. and teach Absolutely. leadership. So that's how I broke everything down. And remember, in business, in, in the world that I'm in with info marketing products or info products, you're selling to the old you. Mm-hmm. So to the old me, when I first got started in business, I didn't know what the hell to do. Right. I was confused. I didn't know about marketing, sales processes, operations, mm-hmm. customer support. And most people don't when they they first start businesses if they They haven't gone to school. do not Mm -hmm. know. And the crazy thing is, in my academy, I got professors that I mentor, doctors I mentor, and they done went through all the school systems. Right. But I tell them, like, listen, you tried it yourself. You see what got you. Come my way and watch what happened. Let me show you something proven. Because I don't like to teach nothing I haven't done myself. Right. Because I feel like, you know, that's hypocritical. Like, don't like, don't tell me I need a mentor if you ain't got a mentor. Right. Don't tell me you're going to be my coach if you ain't got a coach. Absolutely. Don't tell me, like, you don't want somebody to guide me that never been where I, where, where I want to go, but you right. ain't try the shit that you're telling me Absolutely. you Agreed. want me to do. I agree. I agree with that. Like, it's just like, you know, there was a saying that uh, actually just, just passed, like, 
Kanye, he was talking to, he had an interview with somebody and they asked him um, something about money. And he was like, like, well, I'll do respect. I mean, he probably said it different than I said it, but mm-hmm. well, I'll do respect. I'm not going to talk to someone about money that's broker than me. 100%. Like, why? Oh my you know, God. it makes all the sense. Like, yes. you know, like you can't tell me what to do. You can't teach me how to ride a bike if you don't know how to ride a bike. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, it just doesn't make sense that way. And I always go about life with it has make it make sense. Make what yes. you're saying make sense to me. And whatever you're saying, you should have been there, done that. And so Correct. forth. So I 110 percent agree Correct. with that. You're, you're not you're not in, even in a position to tell me anything. Right. Right. How you're a financial advisor and you broke. Right. How you're a financial advisor. You ain't got more money than me. So how can you advise me what to do with my money if you ain't even got more money than me? Absolutely. I want somebody to advise me that got more money than me. Right. Right. And I, OK, so my, I guess my next question is what is the best advice you can give to somebody that is trying to start a career or own a business or just profit yeah. in any way? Pay to play. If you want some pay for it, don't be scared to invest in your brain and your ability and your God given talent. Sharpen those tools. Absolutely. Whatever you are a at. Make it an A plus. Put Absolutely. focus on it. Take what you know and turn it into a business. Absolutely. There's certain things you know right now that somebody will pay you five to ten thousand dollars for. Why? Because they don't know it. And right. they're gonna pay for mistakes. So it's either you pay for mistakes or you get a discount and pay somebody who already made them. Right. Because That's- already made the mistakes for you. So why would you go and make like last year, last year, third in the last quarter, I lost three million dollars. From one mistake, Oof. one mistake, I know when I, I can have a conversation with my students mm-hmm. and tell them in 10 minutes how not to make that mistake. Right. So if I tell you anything, less than $3 million is worth the game. If you do right. what I do and you want to learn what I know. Absolutely. It's a no brainer. So learn from other people's mistakes, find your mentor that's all I was going to say. And teach what you know. First and foremost, find you a mentor. Teach what you know. Absolutely. And it's a game changer. Absolutely. Find what makes you special and teach that. Absolutely. And I also feel like, you know, when you're trying to start something as far as entrepreneurship, you have to know and love what it is that you're trying to do. Yes. Also, because you don't want to come to do something that you're not in love with because then it becomes a job and then it becomes boring and then you're not all the way in it. And I just I just feel like when you're passionate about what it is that you do, it becomes even better. Mm. It becomes, you know, to the full capacity of what it can be because your heart and passion is in it. Not yes. just, you know, th- for example, like if someone wants to go to school to be a teacher, mm-hmm. right? And mm-hmm. they're going for the check and, you know, mm-hmm. they're going for the steady uh, income or they're going for the hours that it, the nine to five and having summers off for the schedule or whatever it is, but yeah. they're not passionate about that job. So then it, it it's a domino effect on how it is with the children that are learning in school, with you as, as the teacher. And it, it's just a trickle effect when you're not passionate about what you do. Yeah. And I feel like, you know, you speaking about this is your genuine, true passion. Like you said, mm-hmm. you know, uh, you got a message from God mm-hmm. and and you took it and you ran with it and you're passionate about it. I can mm-hmm. tell by how you speak about it. And I just feel like when people are passionate about what they do, it just makes things all the more better. Yeah, I, w- I 100 percent agree. Um, people have to match their passion with skill set also absolutely because i can be passionate as hell about basketball and i could be goddamn 411 right it ain't happening right right right. so it has to make sense that goes back to it has to make sense like you can't just yeah exactly you know and then there's people that you know are uberly tall but suck at basketball too you know what i'm saying that goes back to having that skill set you know like sharpening and you have to you have to put in the work yeah. First and foremost, like you have, there's people that just feel like everything's just given, 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 given. And it yeah. doesn't work that way in life. Mm. You know, like you could probably have something and it's given to you, but it always comes with something else. There's always something behind that. You yes. know, it's, it's free, but you got to pay for shipping or like, it, you know what I'm saying? There's yeah. always something behind that. I always say nothing in life is free, whether that's game, whether that's 
food, shipping, whatever it is. There's nothing. There's always a catch behind something that's free. Yeah. Like, you know, it comes with something else. So I just feel like um, with you doing what you do and finding your passion in it, I just think that's that's super dope, you know, and um, I guess I, I want to ask, what is your reason why you do what you do now by like helping others gain the knowledge that you that you gain from someone else? Yeah, for me, it's legacy. It's one thing to say Speck had great music, but it's another to say he made a million millionaires. Mm -hmm. That's a different type of. Absolutely. That's so a is mic that, drop is that right your there. goal now or what is your Yeah, is your so goal? my my mission altogether is to create a billion billionaire. I mean, a, a billion, impact a billion people financially, mentally, and spiritually. That's dope. That's what, I, that's what I'm going to do. I love right? that. And my ultimate goal is to make a million millionaires. I feel like if McDonald's could do it, I can do it. Absolutely. Right? I want to create more millionaires than McDonald's. And I know I can do it. And that's what's going to happen. Absolutely. Right now, I'm working on building a campus and and making my school accredited school so I can disrupt the actual education system. But then also, I have Spectacular School of Business, which is my executive education. And I get to be disruptive in the area that they want cookie cutter and put my mm -hmm. sauce on it. Yeah. So anybody who wants to run around with a degree, say less, I'm gonna go ahead and kill them over there too. Right. And then when I when they graduate from there and I put them in my executive program, I'm going straight disruptive. Right, so what, what are all the different aspects of life and I guess mentorship and business that you teach at your school? Yeah, so for me, we focus on teaching people how to take what they know, packaging it up in a way where they can sell it in their sleep and make passive income. So it's not just like, you know, business on um, like tech business. It's it's deeper than just tech. It's all yeah. different walks of businesses yeah. and all different walks of life for that yes. particular school. Yes. So we teach you, first of all, we, we go over all fundamentals first. Mm -hmm. We teach you branding, teach you operations teach you about customer service. We teach you about marketing, social media, going viral, everything you possibly need to become a seven figure business. Like one of my students named Shay, she jumped in and one of my, my lower level programs mm -hmm. made a million dollars off of it. Came back and say, listen, Spec, I don't went through everybody programs. I don't tried everything. I'm back to you now. Mm -hmm. You was the best out of everybody. Right. She started naming all these names. I was like, wow. And then she came back and she said, I want to give you a hundred thousand. What's your top program? So from her, I created a hundred thousand dollar program. And I realized that the more people pay, the more they pay attention. So I Absolutely. started to put different tiers in place. So I know how much attention to give you. Right. People come to me all the time. Like, Spec, help me out. I got a million dollar idea. Or they, they say it all the time. All of my students and how I know how much attention to give you is how much money you pay. Right. I give you attention based on how bad you want it and how much you want it shows how much you're putting down. So what is the minimum to get into a spectacular school academy program? Yeah. So we have a, a challenge. Mm -hmm. It's like $97 for a challenge. I do it for five days. It's called a social media income challenge. And I'm in there for five days going over what I learned in 10 years. And I put it all in five days as an accelerator program. And that's like the bottom tier program where you could come in. It's uh, $97. It's 297 for VIP. And then it's my super VIP, my diamond, where they have, you know. And all our five days. This is all five days, but mm -hmm. different levels Tears. on how. Right. Yeah, because the people that's on the diamond, they get to ask me questions. They get, I literally give them a senior success advisor. So I literally pay people to make sure you have the best experience, make sure you freaking dominate during this challenge. And then at the end of the challenge, I teach them how to take their expertise and turn it into something that's going to be five to $10,000 a month. Right. Like one student, she came the last day of the challenge, made $700. I said, okay, great. Let's turn that up. Two weeks, 10 grand. In a month, 20,000 off of what she learned in the challenge. Oh, wow. And she just took, Off she did four X. $97. Nine, no, she joined the VIP. It was 600 okay. It's $600, so 600 at the time. 600 but made 20 bands. Made 20000 And she's still month. making money. Yeah, she's still making yeah. money. Yeah. 
And her business is completely different than Forex. She t- she already had the skill of trading Forex. Mm-hmm. I taught her the framework. She taught she took what I taught her, packaged it up in a way where she could sell it, start selling it. By the time she finished, she made twenty thousand dollars off of teaching people now how to do what she already know how to do as From, a forex trader, not it. teaching people how to do forex. Oh, so trade hers was trading. Hers was trading. Yeah. So if if they come with like let's say a clothing brand or like a purse brand, is it the same type of like marketing, you know, uh, marketing dynamic and like analysis that you guys have for? Is it? I, I guess more so. What I'm saying is like, is it the same um, set of? Uh, it's the same skill set. Yeah, same skill set. And, That's and what I'm you to need say. so every we know what a business need to hit seven figures. Right. I didn't do this like I do it with my eyes closed. Mm-hmm. Like I launch a business in a couple months is at a million because it's the same framework, no different than Elon Musk. He's gonna go right. launch PayPal, billion dollar company. He gonna go launch Tesla, billion dollar company. Go launch right. SpaceX, billion dollar company. Why? Because he's taking the same framework and he's just inserting it in every business. See, I don't have a billion dollar framework yet. Mm -hmm. It's coming. But what I do have, I have a nine figure framework. Mm -hmm. And if I got nine figure framework and I put on anything, you at least print out a million dollars. Right. Exactly. Right. That's impressive. So how does it make you feel that you're generating, you know, future millionaires? It makes me feel good. It's, I, I was told that one wise man once told me, if you help another enough people get what they want, you in return get what you want. Absolutely. So if and I'm in, if 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 I want to become a millionaire, I gotta help people make a hundred thousand dollars. Oh, absolutely. If I want to become a multimillionaire, I need to help people hit multiple six figures. If I want right. to become a billionaire, I gotta help you make millions. Absolutely. So a million millionaires to me. Is easier than I think. I really feel that way. Absolutely. Because once you set up a system that's proven that anybody can follow step by step, it's easy to do it. If I give you a manual right now, say, build this table that we on right now Mm -hmm. and put the mics on it. Here goes a manual A through Z, one through 100, step by step on how to put this together. Here goes the screwdriver. Here goes the screws. Make it happen. Do you think you can do it? Um, if I read all the directions properly and, you know, why exactly. not? That's how well my curriculums are structured where you can just take step by step. Mm-hmm. This is my million dollar plan. Go follow this manual. Right. So I, I think that's amazing. I think that you you helping people, you know, get out of situations that are non-monetizing and make them monetize is amazing because a lot of people in a lot of businesses need that, Mm. you know, need that, need that structure and that guidance of how to go about it instead of just wasting funds that they might not have to waste. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like if a lot of businesses knew about that or knew about your school prior to starting a business, instead of losing money, they, they could start making money you know, yeah. now. So I think that that's amazing. Yeah. People just really have to go out and go find it. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of people are complacent and they wait for things to come to them. Absolutely. Absolutely. Instead of going out and being aggressive and what goals they're trying to accomplish. Yeah. And I just feel like you can't really teach ambition and hustle. Yeah. I feel like that's 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 something that's instilled within a person, mm. you know, because there's some people that like really grind to get theirs. And then there's people that just patiently wait for it to just fall in their lap, which yeah. most likely it's never, never Nobody's going to. That's why everybody's in the same system mm-hmm. and in the same situation because everybody went through the same infrastructure. Mm-hmm. And that's why everybody getting the same results. So that's the definition of insanity. You do the same thing over and over again, expecting insanity. for a different result. It's never going to change because you're never doing anything different. Mm-hmm. So once you switch Absolutely. up one, your environment, that's what's the most important. Switch up environment. They did a, a study with a with a shark. They put him in a bowl this big. They put him in there. And for five years, he stayed the same exact size. They took him out. They put a, a GPS on his head. They put him out in the wild. A year later, he was 10 times bigger than what he was. Why? Mm -hmm. Because what happened? His environment changed. Right. He had endless opportunities. He can do whatever the hell he wanted to do. He can be as great as he wanted to be versus he was stagnant in that little bowl. A lot of people are in a bowl right now. Facts. 
We got to figure out how to get out of the bowl so you can go get to the opportunity. Absolutely. Because there's oceans of opportunity out there, but we're too busy listening to the people who don't have, mm -hmm. trying to guide us on how to have. Absolutely. And that's why they don't never get nowhere. Absolutely. And I feel like also, too, like school systems are structured to teach you what they want to teach you, not not the basics of what it yes. is that you need genuinely in life. Now, I'm not saying don't go to school because I genuinely believe in having an education and knowing the basics of what you need to do in life. But there's there's certain things that I believe that, you know, our school system should teach us, like how to write a check, mm. you know, whether that's in high school, you know, like you, you, I feel as important as sex education is, mm -hmm. you need to learn the business aspects of life as well, too. Like, you know, how to do your taxes, how to write a check. How, like, this is stuff that I feel should be taught, like, you know, junior, senior, 10th grade in high school. Mm -hmm. You know, not something that we have to go to college and take a business course for or like, you know, right. go to trade school and take a course for that. Like, it should be something that you teach when you're able to get a job and what are you 16 years old when you're able to get a job you need to mm -hmm. know how to write a check how to go to the bank how to cash that check out how to, you know like just the simple things that we might do on an everyday basis they're not teaching do you want to know why because they don't want us to know exactly <laughs> why else would they have something that everybody know they need right because the people who realize that they're being bamboozled are the ones that become successful. Absolutely. So the reason why the school systems was put in place is because back in the day, they couldn't find anybody to work in the factories. Mm -hmm. So if everybody's been entrepreneurial at the time, that's how it was. Everybody was so entrepreneurial, they couldn't find no workers because everybody was bosses. Right. Everybody had their own stuff going on. So Rockefeller put together a board and... Once they created this school board, they put everybody, I think it was Henry Ford on there. I think it was Dale Carnegie. I think I forgot the board, actual people. Right. But those is the caliber of people that sat on that board, all with a, a the fit the narrative of how do we get people to go to the factories to work? Because if we don't have people in the factories, we can't make the cars. Right. We can't build the things. So what can we do? They strategized. They came up with the plan. They said, we're going to train them. Right. They came up with the school systems. They first started. Nobody wanted to go. Then they made it mandatory to go to school. And then they taught you how to come at nine o'clock, 9 a.m., how to take a lunch break, right. come back on time from your lunch break. Get out, repeat it, same cycle all over again. Right. And it's only stuff just to keep you busy, to prepare you to come work for them. That is true. Not only somewhere for their kids to go while the main people come to the factories, but to mold them and groom them so when they get out, they're not smart enough to do anything but go work for the factories. Right. So that's the reason why they created it. And that's why it's never been disrupted. Every industry has been disrupted. Every industry. You look at appliances in the house, they got digital dashes and right. refrigerator you can tap on. And like the car industry is electrical. Mm -hmm. what, what's going on in school systems? Same old thing. They still talking about how Christopher Columbus discovered America where people was already at. How you discover right. something with somebody, somebody at already, right? That is true. Erase black history, put the white people in, plug that up. Don't teach nothing about them black people. Go ahead, yeah. blow the nose off the spinks, like all, like confuse the people. So once you are in an environment of confusion and just simplicity, no thoughts going through your mind on any like things that you really need on real life situations, it makes you get out and depend on what's the next step, which is college. Right. That's the next level. So, like, okay, college. If you're not going to be a doctor, a scientist, a lawyer, what the hell are you going to college for? That is true. That's how I honestly feel. Because so many people I know that went to college feeling like that's what they had to do. Don't no, even use their Don't degree. even use what they went to college for. That is true. They're miserable. And then they, they're true. in all this debt. They end off on the wrong foot. 
Now they're playing catch up. Mm -hmm. And then they try to go get a job. But the job tell them you don't have the experience. But they say, well, how the hell am I going to get the experience if you won't hire me? But then the job, go hire the person with all experience, but don't have no degree. That is true. Jobs don't care about anything but a result. What you know and who you know, as opposed to less, not as opposed, but less your education. Who you know and what you know. Yes. As opposed to how long you've been in school in certain aspects of career choices. You know, I, I just feel like. You know, regardless of what you go to school for, which education is important and, you know, like you definitely not need to learn, need to know how to read and add and, you know, like the basic bare necessities. Yeah. But I also feel like, like I said earlier, like you just have to get taught things that are like essential to your everyday life. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Like even <clears throat> even even something as like you know, folding laundry, like, you know, you need Mm. to have like a home etiquette class, you need to have like a business class, you know, and this is all things that need to be learned, credit, taxes, all of that stuff that that you need to know when you go 18, yes, 18 years old, when you're out and about and no longer in your parents' household where Mm -hmm. where they can't dictate what you have going on how do you live life if that's not taught to you by your parents a mentor specifically or like just someone that has your back you know what i'm Mm -hmm. saying there's a lot of people that are 30 40 years old that don't even know how to write a check there's there's a lot of people that don't know how to file their own taxes there's a lot of people that don't know how to do uh checks and balances there's a lot of people that and that and not just monetary wise but just like you know a day-to-day living like there's people that don't know how to wash clothes don't know how to separate them or just you know the 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 bare necessities of life genuinely i feel need to be taught yeah. in school systems before you turn 18 before you go <clears throat> into the world by yourself it, it, it all starts in the household yes. you know like it all starts at home what your parents taught you what your school teaches you um how you go about life and your morals and your standards and your goal starts in the household then it goes to the school system because those are your two places growing up but this is a great thing about kids now they know that they have the internet and they understand the Absolutely. power of Google. Back in the day when we was learning, we only learned what our parents taught us and what our teachers taught us. That's it. These kids now, That's yo, it. if they want to learn something, they know Google and YouTube are there. Absolutely. And they will learn. They will literally and learn. And it's free. It's free information it's free. where it's like. And they understand that. Yes. All Absolutely. you got to do is ask Google the correct question. It will give you the correct answer. Absolutely. But if you say it in the wrong way, you won't get your answer. Absolutely. And these kids understand it and they're not waiting for us. So that's why I decided to create Spectacular Junior Academy because the schools like it's crazy because I agree with you so much. And the way that the school systems are right now, even from like elementary, middle school, it's only one type of person or a certain type of characteristic you got to have to succeed in school. Everybody else are outcasts, loudmouths, class clowns. No, mm-hmm. you know what that is? That's an entertainer. That's mm-hmm. a talk show host. That's Absolutely. a that's someone who's going to be a leader, Absolutely. right? But instead it's of putting them in as, an environment, it's, it's shunned on. It's exactly, shunned on as exactly. opposed to praise. Exactly. So, give you an example. My son, he never he didn't even want to go to school no more. He's 8 years old. Say, "Daddy, I don't want to go to school." He will cry when I go to take him to school. Mm-hmm. I take him out of school and say, what did you learn? He say, I don't know. How you in school all day and you, ain't, you don't know right, nothing? Right, right, right. And then the teacher start telling us, oh, he's acting up. He's running around. He's, and we tried everything. Montessori school, public school. Pri- we tried everything. Mm-hmm. And he was a sore thumb to every last one of them. Right. And then they say, oh, we got to test him. Okay, test him. He felt every test they gave him. They want. They say he was a special ed student. Mm-hmm. Special ed. I right. kiss my ass. Right. And withdraw my my kid. Right. Straight up. I'm out. Put him in homeschool. When to go pay the best teacher. Come on, let's go. Right. Pay her. She come to my office and she teach my son. He could not read. In two weeks, he took the same test. That he got a 20 on out of 100 and got a 100 out of 100 on every single test he took. He took five tests 
And all of them, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, the lowest you can possibly get. And he came back and scored 100 on all of them. Now he reads fluently. And he loves school now. He asked daddy, is school tomorrow? Mm -hmm. But I feel like, too, that's all about the person teaching, too. You know what I'm saying? Like, the, the, ha the, the interaction you have with the children, how you go about your teaching, that goes back to loving your job and having passion about what you do, too. You know, I would, and, and, and I, your I would curriculum. say this with the with the teachers, they have a certain way they have to teach. Yes, you have so curriculum. many kids, mm -hmm. and the school systems don't cater to that personality type. Right. It's sixteen different personality types. Right. You Absolutely. mean to tell me you're only focusing on a, a handful of them, two right. or three of them? What the about average. the rest of these? Right. Right, right. right. So those are the people that get the D's and F's. Those are, but guess what? The people that make the D's and F's hires the people that make the A's and B's. Right. Those are the that bosses. Right. But when is a school going to be created to for entrepreneurial kids? So now imagine if you take somebody that is entrepreneurial and you start grooming them as a boss from middle school, from elementary school. Imagine yeah, how yes. massive teaching them leadership yeah teaching them emotional that's the, intelligence that's what they're doing with like other things like you know sports for example you know you're teaching them when they can just pick up a bat exactly. how to play baseball so exactly. why not teach them when they can learn how to yes. read how to do business so i i, I completely agree you definitely have to smart. cater to the particular person on what it is that they want to do so because, and, smart. and have to 110 percent smarter yeah. than we no, they are. 100%. You know, like my, I have a four year old daughter and she's super intelligent. And I know she she's very charismatic and has, you know, she has character to her and, you know, she loves acting. And I would tell her dad, like, this girl's going to be an actor. She's going to be she's just an entertainer. You know, yeah. everything that she says and does is animated, but yeah. she could still do her schoolwork. She still does her A's, B's, you know, knows her letters, knows her alphabets, yeah. all of that stuff. But she doesn't think that it's fun. No matter what type of interaction we do, oh, let's color after, or you get a reward after, or this, that. She doesn't think that it's fun. What she thinks is fun is acting, is making um, making uh, toy reviews. She won't open up a toy unless she reviews it. Mm. And it, you know, goes on YouTube. And it, But I also feel like um, I still want her to be a kid. I don't want her to like grow up too fast and in the industry or like, you know, put her in TV and put her in movies and stuff like that to where it's still like, you know, she still needs to know the base. She's four. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I still want her to know the basics of life before she goes out and like explores all the other aspects of life that she she may want to explore. Well, I still mm -hmm. give her that like platform of exploration on yeah. YouTube and, you know, Instagram. But like. You know, I don't want you to be like in movies and acting and, you know, doing all that to where it takes away your basic necessities of life that you need yeah. to learn. Experience to get her there. Four years old, she she might have fun going in movies, sets and stuff yeah. like that. I So I talked to Grant Cardone, you know, Grant Cardone. Mm -mm. So Grant Cardone, he's a guy, you know, he's. He makes a lot of impact on what he does as like a billion dollars worth of real estate, a few billion dollars worth of real estate. And he inspired me to put my kids in homeschool because mm -hmm. I'm looking at he has two daughters and they're super sharp. I'm like, damn, like so homeschool can't be that bad. Right. 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 Because I, I see the, these kids are sharp. Like, and it's one on one. Yo, and they're t they're literally training and teaching in front of like. 10,000 people in the stadium as a right. kid speaking. I'm like, wow. So I talked to him. I said, man, the social, the social part of the homeschooling, I don't, I don't feel like he's getting enough right, social. Right, right. And he was like, man, forget them kids. Him being around them other kids is it's gonna make them dumber anyway. Right? Don't quote me if he said that word for word. Right. But he kind of said similar to that. So it made me understand, like, well, them being around me is better than being around the other kids. Even though they still have a social life, but if they if they if they are, are you know away from that for a while and more around me is not a bad thing because I'm teaching them more advanced. Your surroundings. Yeah, I'm I'm teaching them more advanced things, but at the same time, like my son loves 
you know, interacting with me and interacting with adults and things like that. And he still go plays with his kids and he and, and he basically he yarns for that. But at the same time, like he's sharp as shit because right. who he's around, his surroundings. So absolutely. the reason for me saying that is that your daughter might be around that environment and just might end up sharp as hell. Yeah, she's sacrificing a little bit on the childhood, but right, man, the future is getting brighter and brighter. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's something that definitely we're going to have to talk about when we get to the house, but uh, she's, <laughs> she's definitely interested in for sure, 110%. So she's like, now I'm like, all right, let's see how the YouTube goes. Let's see how these toy review goes. And, yeah. you know, like, let, let's There's see where it pans it. out. Absolutely. Absolutely. So for everyone that comes on the show, we play two games. Okay. Just so people can get to know you outside of who you are as a person and what they mm -hmm. know of you as of now. So the two games is pick your poison, which is a game of would you rather, like, would you rather do this or would you rather do that? Mm -hmm. And I play with you too. So you're not in the hot seat by yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, bad choices is have you ever. So have you ever done this, whatever the, this is on the card, this is mm -hmm. this or that you have two choices, two different cards. We read them off um, to each other and then you pick. Rules of the game. People love to cheat when they come on. Mm -hmm. You have to pick this or that. You can't remix your answer, but you can give an explanation as to why you picked that answer. Let's go. Ready? Which one do you want to play? You pick. Your choice. Uh, let's pick your poison. He started giggling. <laughs> Pick your poison is definitely, I mean, they're both toxic games, but. <laughs> they're, both toxic they're both toxic They're both toxic. So we'll do. I like a little toxic. Yeah, Go ahead. we'll do uh, six cards each and you can pick your cards. So you can pick oh, my so poison. Oh, so you game. get, okay. Yeah, so I'm going to just do four, five, six. And then you can mix and match what two cards you want to put together. I'll start so you can see how it is played. And, um, okay. Hey, this is a lot going on here. All right. <laughs> this is nuts. I got a lot of crazy stuff. <laughs> what? Okay. Y'all wilding right now. This is nut. This is a lot going on. Okay. First two cards. Get poked by a used needle or cut off your nipples with a butter knife. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I take the first one. Get poked by a used needle. You go ahead, just poke me. I yeah, I mean, it. at the end of the day, explanation wise, that's why I said you're gonna want to give your explanation. Why? Explanation wise, I feel <clears throat> like you know it doesn't have to be a dirty needle. It could just be a used needle that has the same blood type as you. I mean, it doesn't have. To I'm have saying like, a used needle I can clean before I use it. That too. That too. Absolutely. Good explanation. All right, it's on you. All right. These wild. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, they're definitely um, not your traditional. Also, you got to do, do two of them. Yeah, you pick two. So it's this or that card, like this card or that card. This is where every guest comes on and opens up, I feel like. <laughs> Yeah, these are crazy. Yeah, it's a crazy game. I told you it was toxic. Oh my god. They don't they don't get any better. So the more you look, it's just worse and worse and worse. <laughs> <laughs> you got your two? Why why all my six questions? No, they're all they're all pretty bad. Yeah, okay. They're, I mean, like you all ready? of them. I'm ready. <laughs> I I I played this game a lot, so I, I feel like no <laughs> questions hard. That's why he laughed because he knows this game is crazy. Eat a two. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Yo, this is well. All right, let's go. All right. Eat a Twinkie full of semen. Not doing it. Or call your partner's mother right after you have sex every time to tell her how good it was. That one. I'm telling okay. I'm telling, sorry, grandma. <laughs> sorry, mama. I, I, it is what it is. We got kids, so you already know. <laughs> At this point, I mean, like, what can right. you do? Yo, this is crazy. All right. And my next two is. Well, this is all bad. Um. All right. 
go down on your grandmother or stick your hand in a fryer? Say it one more time. Go down on your grandmother <laughs> or stick your hand in a fryer. <laughs> stick my hand in a fryer. I mean, at this point, my, the my other one is just grandma, not an option. My grandma is not even alive anyway, <laughs> but if she was alive, uh, that's just nasty. That's just happening. nasty. All right. <clears throat> Create my own rules. All right. All right. Break into a sperm bank and drink everything or eat a Twinkie full of semen. Oh, <laughs> that's two semen. You ain't got no choice. I'm doing the Twinkie because it's less semen than the sperm bank. I didn't know what that could And, and, and. I'm going to choose my man semen to infest the <laughs> Twinkie hopefully, with, hopefully, okay? Hopefully, hopefully, <laughs> That is my explanation. Oh, my God. It's good protein. Yo, these are wild. Sorry, Dad. <laughs> these are wild. Why all I right, got my all last, sex questions? Let my me get last, another. <laughs> last two questions. Show up to a good friend's wedding wearing only a purple thong or die why die while being buried at the stake after living a full life die what? while being well i'm sorry die while being burned at the stake after living a full life no nah, i take the thong that ain't nothing <laughs> that's not as that, bad that right? ain't that ain't nothing I, i'm gonna go ahead and get a little torque in at the same time <laughs> that's my last one all right you ready yes i'm ready have your child catch you cheating on your spouse? Ooh, tough. Or have everyone convinced that you had sex with a family member even though you haven't? Damn. Have my child catch me cheating on my spouse? Mm -hmm. Or a family member? Or, or, have, or incest, pretty much. Yes. I'm not. Or, or have everyone convinced that you had sex with a family oh, member? Oh, so you don't have to be. You didn't have to have sex. You're just you, convincing people that you did. You got to have sex with them. But it said you're convincing them. Or you have to have sex. I'm not having sex with a family member. You One, that's just- You get caught cheating on your spouse and you let your kids I watch? I would be like, you know, your father and I are separated at the time. We're not working out. But I think y'all totally together right now. I, I I'd rather just Why cheat than incest because that's I'm not I'm not that's nasty I'm not fucking my family member. No, I'm it's sorry, a, it's a, it's sorry a, babe. It's a family member even though you have it. Oh, okay. So I'm I'm doing <laughs> I'm doing the convincing then. Right, See how he cool. tried to play me in the question? He straight tried <laughs> to play me on the question. Look what you got me doing. <laughs> I mean, these questions are nuts. I told no, you no, it was no, top the crazy. game. That is crazy. I never in my life. <laughs> so tell wilding. everybody where they can find you and what to look out for from Spectacular. Man, listen, first thing first, man, if y'all want to join one of my challenges and uh, make an impact and teach what you know. Uh, you can jump in at socialmediaincomechallenge.com or y'all can text me 305-614-9296. Text me right now. Hashtag income. Get your money with Spectacular Smith, y'all. And that is it for Telly Talk.